Um, hi everyone, I think I've met everyone by this point, but I'm Joe Kevin and I'm really, um, it has been an incredible two days. I'm deeply grateful to um, everyone for putting this all together and for, for, for the incredible presentations, including the last panel, which I'm just sort of still taking in, um, and I enjoyed so much. I'm really happy to be here with Casey Williams, um, my colleague at Rice in Environmental Studies, um, and we are going to talk to you about a kind of project that we've been working on with two extraordinary artists, um, Marina Zirko and Sarah Rothberg, and some of you are already familiar with this uh, world, this world of world building uh, <laughs> that they've been engaged in. Um, I'm going to take a few minutes to talk a little bit about the kind of the history of how this is all, how this has evolved. Um, Casey's then going to talk a little bit about our most recent venture with them, which is um, working on their kind of world building system, particularly to think about energy and energy transition, which is such an important topic right now. Um, and then from there, you will be building worlds together. Um, and we'll sort of, so we'll, after about sort of 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minute opening, um, you'll have a good sort of maybe 20, 25 minutes together to build the world. We'll get to that. Don't worry, you'll, you'll figure it out. Um, and then we're going to just talk about it at the end. We're going to take about an hour to do this. And then we all will enjoy each other's company and conversation. So, um, a number of years ago, when I was um, doing a lot of arts writing um, in the city of, of Houston. Um, I'm a sort of poet and a literary scholar, like sort of training and practice. Um, and, you know, I fell in love with a dance critic, and so I was seeing a lot of dance and getting very opinionated about it. So I started an arts writing practice, and I stumbled onto a show with the first works in Houston um, by the artist Marina Zirko, and it was called Necrocracy, the rule of the dead. And by the dead, she meant fossil fuels. Um, and it was an extraordinary um, exhibition with everything from hazmat suits for kids, think about that for a minute, um, to extraordinary ways of tracking plastics and all sorts of other sort of crazily sort of long-lived um, things that um, originally come from very ancient dead things, right? And thinking about that through the whole, whole kind of fossil fuel way of living, which is what we have. Um, little did I know, <laughs> after, and after many other projects, that at one point Marina would tell me she was working on a what you might call a future simulation system, a world building exercise that started as um, a deck of cards. And this is actually not the original, um, which was a kind of small distribution kind of Kickstarter campaign for a system that they're calling, okay, this is the real problem. It's been called Investing in Futures, and they just told me they're thinking of changing the name. So I don't know what to say about that, but it's been called Investing in Futures, um, a constraint-based system to ask you in groups as a kind of um, group world building exercise to imagine a future you'd like to live in based on those constraints, which can be um, seemingly positive and then maybe turn out not to be when you start thinking about them. They might be aversive, they might be strange and quirky, and doesn't that sound familiar from 2024 and all the years to come? But that sort of phrase, imagine a world you'd like to live in given those circumstances, which is kind of where we are. Right, trying to figure out what that means. Um, it started as a little kind of Kickstarter campaign. It started as, um, and I love, I love artifacts, I love, I love a card deck, but not that many people get access to it. Um, and so some years back, I said, wait a what about a website? <laughs> I do love cards, but what about a website? And so that's, what something, that's something that we did. Um, the Center for Environmental Studies underwrote a website. Um, it's even more elaborate than when it first launched. This is that website. It's really investinginfutures.world. You can kind of see the page up here, and you'll be, you may be surfing to it a little bit for your own exercise. Um, and there are lots of ways you can work with it. It now lives in all these incredible ways. It's a website, but also just to sort of say quickly, it was just in MoMA in the Creativity Studio, a sort of one-card version of it, a sort of smaller deck called What If. And something like 60,000 people went through that creativity studio over a couple months and got to sort of experience it. So they've really had this incredible reach. Um, and they've been incredibly generous as collaborators and inter interlocutors. I'll just sort of show you quickly. Um, they've made a number of different decks. And as a way of saying thank you for underwriting the website, they created a little deck for us that has a special use. I'll come to that in a second. But the original deck, and this is the sort of the online format of it. Um, we also wanted to make sure like everybody, anyone could use it for free. That was really important to us. Um, your job is to pull six cards. Oops, sorry. Um, and then you flip them. 
you, uh, in a group, ideally, collaboratively imagine the world you would like to live in based on these constraints. And you'll see some of the constraints in a second. Um, and then there's an additional um, job, which is as you build your, um, your world, you narrate at a certain point your point of view on it from a role card, which is sort of liberal. So let's see what these are. I'm hoping, no, it didn't happen. Um, sometimes you get government by cats. It's a long story, but in any case, as you can kind of see, you start to see what the constraints are and then you start to have to work with them. Okay, how do I imagine the world that I want to live in if um, the shared value is achieved? Hey, this is not only like right now, but also a little complicated. Or um, government by priesthood, DIY medicine. Money expires after one year. It has provoked so many crazy conversations in the courses that I've taught with this. So, um, and in, let's see what this particular role is. Leader, okay, so there's some different ones. So this is how that, so, so the, the basic system works. Um, and it's something that we've used in environmental studies classes a lot. It is a, by far the most, one of the most popular things. I often think I just need to get out of the way and just leave the website up and you know, that's kind of class. Um, but, but again, what, they did, what they've done, and Maria and Sarah have a, a really kind of wonderful generosity. Um, they invite a lot of people in. They work with Una Chaudhary, an important scholar of environmental studies and theater to build one called Ecospheric Cosmologies, trying to think about multi-species worlds. Um, and actually the small one card at a time, what if deck has a lot to do with that one actually, so it's kind of fascinating. Um, and for us, they built one called Waste because we were having some conversations on campus across um, periods, across disciplines about waste. And so the chilling, <laughs> the chilling cards in the Waste deck um, feature things. Sometimes well, this is just what I do when I teach. Okay, students, let's talk about this. Right. So how do these constraints then force you to imagine a different kind of world? Right. Um, what we've done since, and this is what's sort of going to pass things over to Casey in a second, is try to imagine what does it mean to kind of invest, invest more, uh, invest more in building out the system in collaboration with Marina Zerko and Sarah Rothberg. And there are kind of two ways that that's happening. We've been working on a new expansion around energy and energy transition. Well, and Casey's been sort of really heading up that process, and we're going to be thinking towards one that's called maybe coastal futures, right? And we may sort of, again, be reaching back out to all of you, especially in New Orleans, to think about that in the future. But let me pass it over to Casey, and, and we'll hear a little bit about how we've been sort of building the, the energy, um, building the energy expansion, which then you'll be planning. In just a moment. So um, this is what the energy, this is a prototype of what the energy version of the game will look like on the site. And before we play it, everyone here is going to play it. It's brand new, so we're uh, some of the first people actually to see this, which is cool. I'll just give you kind of an overview of how we went through the process and why we think an energy deck is an important expansion to have. Um, so you know, part of what motivates this is you know the fact that a transition away from fossil fuels is an imperative. We know it's an imperative, but actually imagining what that looks like can be quite difficult, partly because we're so entangled in energy systems that are powered by fossil fuels that are extractivists, right? That lock us into high carbon ways of life. And so part of what we're trying to do with the energy expansion is first to estrange ourselves from the energy systems that we rely on uh, in the present and really start to think critically about what it means to participate in, be shaped by systems that we don't always see or think about. And then the second point is to remind players that energy, which is sometimes thought of as a subject that experts, scientists, engineers, they have a kind of special relationship to or knowledge of to remind people that they too are experts. You are all experts in energy, regardless of whether you've studied it in a formal way, because you interact with energy systems all the time on a daily basis. But you also think about energy in ways that are more expansive than just the kinds of fuels we use. We think about metabolic energy, bodily energy, spiritual energies, affective energies. We have a kind of vernacular about energy that allows us to think beyond the constraints that are imposed by specifically fossil fuel energy systems. So we wanted to do this and we got together with Marina and Sarah and we assembled a, um, 
group of scholars from around the world, really, who are thinking seriously about energy. And we kind of brainstormed what sorts of constraints would have to be in there. And then we've done a process of consultations with other experts, ranging from scholars who work on uh, like low modernist energy in India, so cow dung as an energy source, what does that look like? Um, to climate justice organizers who are thinking very seriously about what it means to live in a uh, fossil fuel uh, sacrifice zone and what it would mean to uh, organize against that and for a future where people feel uh, that they want to live in. Um, and so, you know, I'll just say very quickly, the, 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 the one question I would ask for you as we plan, actually, so part of the part of the premise, part of the thesis, is that having constraints that range from the very concrete to the absurd is a way to, as Marina says, cut the cord to the present. So it's a way for us to speculate beyond what we consider to be normal or expected as a way to kind of free the imagination to think about worlds that are not yet but could be. And as a result, a lot of the constraints, as you'll see, move away from very rooted, place-specific kinds of uh, you know, ways of thinking about energy or government, say. And I think a question we have, especially for me, hearing about a lot of place-based projects this weekend, what do we gain by kind of moving into the speculative and the abstract, but also what might we lose? by losing some of the specificity of particular places. So it's a question I would like the players to think about as you, as you do it. Um, so let's go through the, the gameplay. And I'll just say one more thing. Who is our audience? So this, this system has mostly been used with students in different contexts. And we're really trying to think about how to broaden that audience and um, to use it with people who are directly affected by current energy systems have some kind of stake in the transition. Um, so, and that includes all of you. So let's learn how to play. So again, the key constraint is you want to imagine a world you want to live in. And we're gonna ask all the groups, and actually I might ask uh, Sienna and Reminding Jaden to join one of the other groups. Each of you to join one of the other groups. And we're going to have one person at a table with a laptop navigate to this site. And I'll put it down here. So have um, one person at the table go to this site, and you're going to be the facilitator in your group. And once you get there, once you get there, once you get to this site, you're going to you're going to pick six cards, and you're you're going to pick three cards from the uh, blue colored cards at the top. You're going to pick three cards from those categories, so from time concept to infrastructure, and then you're going to pick three cards from what we call the original categories, which were in the original deck. And you also scroll down and make sure you see all of them. You're going to pick three energy cards and three original cards. And I'll just do it as, a, as an example. So, primary energy paradigm, societal energy source, infrastructure. I'll also do uh, health, climate, shared data. Okay, so this is this is one draw, and so primary energy paradigm number of likes. So I guess social media likes, societal energy source star power, and you know part of the fun of the game is figuring out what that means because that's not obvious to me. Uh, infrastructure, everyone works two hours a day at the energy plants. Health, death coaches remind people that energy is indestructible, climate, all clouds contain plastic particulates, shared values, vaccines. 
So that's our draw. So everyone, go ahead and draw your six spots. Go ahead and do that. Okay, it looks like everyone has their cards. Is that right? Yes? All right, everyone has their cards? All right, so we're going to... We're going to cut the cord to the present, as Marina says. So I'm going to read a short visualization to help us get started. Okay, so to awaken our imaginations, we're going to do a visualization, envisioning a world you want to live in, a world you want to live in. Keep that phrase in mind as we do this exercise. You and your group have six cards in front of you. These are the start of your world. Take a moment to read through them all. Before we do the visualization, each of you should focus on any one of the cards, whichever one calls to you. And it's no problem if you select the same card. So everyone take a moment, pick a card, focus on it. Read the words on the card to yourself silently. Do this several times until you've memorized the card. Feel free to paraphrase the words, translate them, free associate, redefine. Ask yourself, if this card is true, what else might be true? If you feel comfortable, close your eyes or focus on a point in the distance. Take a deep breath in and a relaxing breath out. We're cutting the cord to the present. Letting your imagination flow from the statement you chose, begin to imagine a place where you might be right now in this imagined world. Feel free to imagine details, let go of the present conditions and allow wild imaginings. There is no need to make sense out of what you imagine. Remember, you're happy to be in this world. How does that feel in your body? How does the air in this imagined world feel on your skin? Where are you? What time of day is it? Is it bright or is it dark? Are you inside or outside? If you can, wiggle your toes. What's beneath your feet? Are you wearing shoes, no shoes? Is the place where you are a building? If so, who built it? What is it made out of? What is it used for? Are there other people or other beings with you? Who are or what are they? Is there something nearby you can touch? What is it? What does it feel like? Can you pick it up? Focus your attention on it for a moment. Remember, if the statement you started with is true, what else might be true? How far into the distance can you see? Can you hear sounds close by, far away? Can you smell anything? What is around you? Is it busy or quiet, cluttered or empty? Imagine moving around. What else do you encounter? Breathe in, breathe out. Can you hold on to the sensations, sights, and sounds that you're feeling? These will form the basis of your imagined world. Silently, in your mind, form one sentence about this world. and Be ready to share back with your group. Breathe in, breathe out. Hold on to that sentence or fragments or keywords. Open your eyes. Okay, so your goal now is to co-imagine a world with your group, a world you want to live in, and we're gonna take, Joe, 15 or 20 minutes? Yeah, let's take about 20 minutes. 20 minutes. So we're gonna talk about what we think is gonna be, figure out how we can take this together. And your objective, just for this short exercise, is to maybe come up with a, a very sort of brief statement as a group that you can share with the other groups at the end of 20 minutes about what your world looks like. Sound good? All right, let's do it.